All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham, meaning in the name Yahweh Shai, is the true, holy, and powerful name of His only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect within the nation of Israel. And Israel consists of you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as you Israelite foreigners scattered abroad that may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but are Israelites. And I also want to give, give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the whole for the leg, pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. All right, this is the brother you call from the GMS branch out in Des Moines, Iowa, coming back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit, Harvard Kakwadash. And um, this lesson um, is uh, pretty much going into the mindset, uh, well, a few different things, Lord's will, the mindset that we should have. Uh, knowing that what Yahweh Shai uh, suffered for us. And um, I was listening to this clip that one of the brothers had posted in the in our group chat, I think like a week or so back. And the spirit had it to where I, I had a conversation with my uh, with my woman last night. And I was uh, we were kind of I was kind of talking to her about what the Lord uh, did for us. All right. What he did for the sacrifice that he made for our fuck ups all right because if we would have did what was right if we would have been obedient as we were commanded to to be our lord wouldn't have had to suffer this man all right the title of this is uh it says jesus but we understand uh that the lord's name was jesus it's uh yahweh shai so yahweh shai suffering and crucifixion a medical point of view so i'll put this in a group me but um, as I was listening to this, what kept popping into my mind was that I can't believe that I, all right, that I fucked up so bad and was doing so much bullshit to the point that the Lord had to go through this excruciating pain and humiliation for what I did, okay? Because this is what, this is what the Lord had to do. We fucked up. You messed up so bad <laughs> that our Lord had to go through this. And there's no other way to put it. If that doesn't make you feel contrite and broken, that you, <laughs> for your, the things that you did, all right, the things that I did, was the reason that the Lord had to suffer through this. If that doesn't make you feel contrite, uh, I can't say what else. Uh, I don't know what to tell you, man, because this should be, uh, this should break our heart, man. All right. This should break us down. Okay. Put us in a contrite uh, spirit. So, um, I really just got two precepts in mind and Lord's will this lesson, um, be edifying. All right. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 53. And I'm, I'm going to start at verse three. It says he is despised and rejected. Speaking of Yahweh Shai of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of, smitten of the most high and afflicted. Verse five. But he was wounded for our transgressions. So when you listen to this, all right, when you listen to the excruciating pain that the Lord went through, what he suffered, he went through that for what you did. All right. And I'm saying it like this so that it hits home, because, of course, like we understand that the Lord died for the nation of Israel in its totality. But sometimes when you uh, put it in a broad sense, it can kind of take away the impact of you individually like <laughs> what we did individually okay for our mess ups all right when you were doing all types of wickedness and abominations the price that was paid all right uh, uh what what uh you should have suffered and what we should have gone through for those things for breaking those laws for pissing the lord off all right yeah how was i took on that punishment man he went through that Right. So going back, just so that, it, you know, it, it, it should this should impact us. This should hit it home. All right. But it says Isaiah 53 and verse uh, four it's, or verse five. But he was wounded for our transgressions, our sins. He was bruised for our iniquities. 
for the things that I did, for the things that you did, okay? This is why he had to suffer this. If we were obedient, he wouldn't have had to go through this, but we weren't, okay? And just even thinking in this lifetime alone, you went, we went through uh, years of aimlessly living, not even considering the Lord and the things that he suffered, not caring about this sacrifice that he made, just continual, heaping up sin upon sin. And every last one of those things that we did, imagine it as a, a stripe that was uh, uh, that the Lord had to suffer. All right. When we were frivolously living, doing all types of wickedness, didn't care about the things that we were doing. All right. Didn't even realize that we were doing these things. OK, that was pissing the Lord off. Right. Yeah. was shy. He was beaten for that. When we didn't even care about the things that we were doing. All right. When when we were committing iniquities and sins or whatever the case may be, whatever madness we were in. The Lord had to go through excruciating pain for every last one of those things, man. It says, um, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. So the chastisement of our peace was upon him, meaning that the suffering uh, uh, that he went through, the scourges that he went through, the humiliation that he went through, all right, being mocked and spat on, man. Okay. They beat him, man. All right. Those soldiers beat our Lord, man. In the uh, in the scriptures, it talks about how the Lord was marred more than any man. He was beaten worse than anybody, man. He went. Uh, uh, he was bleeding, uh, 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 or sweating blood, going through so much pain, man. All right. But them damn devils, all right, them Romans, they they put they filthy hands on our on our Lord. Because of what we did, man. It says, uh, with his stripes, we are healed. And through him going through that, because he suffered that, all right, and was obedient. And the Lord didn't want to do it in his flesh, man. His flesh did not want to go through that. Who would want to be tormented and go through that excru excruciating pain? All right. The Lord knew that he was going to have to feel that pain. See, even with us, like we have the hope of knowing, like even if certain things we suffer, different things, we have the example of the Maccabees where they went through being tortured and whatnot. And it said that it was it, uh, the the pain was as nothing to them, roughly paraphrasing what it says. So the Lord, you know, had it could have had it to where they didn't even feel anything. You know, even with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they went through the fire. All right. Uh, got thrown in the furnace and the fire didn't even they didn't even feel the heat of it. It was as a. a, 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 a a whistling wind, roughly paraphrasing. So they didn't even get, they didn't even have to feel that. Yahweh knew that he was going to have to feel every last ounce of pain for our transgressions, man. He knew that. So he prayed into the heavenly father. He was like, man, is there any other way? He didn't want to go through that. All right. He didn't want to go through that, man. But he was obedient and he knew that he had to do it. He suffered that, man. Who would even ask a man to go through that for them, man? Imagine you, you, uh, uh, <laughs> you, you, uh, you committed murder. All right. A triple homicide, you know, just putting in these terms, you committed a triple homicide. All right. Uh, uh, robbed a store, robbed a bank, did all these things, all these crimes and you being taken up to trial. The judge, he's like, all right, well, you did all these things. You're going to get, uh, you're going to get the death death penalty all right or you're gonna have 80 years in prison and then you're gonna uh, uh die by the electric chair okay and that's your punishment but then somebody comes in and is like hey you know what I'll, I'll take care of that you know hey whatever that person had to suffer whatever they punishment they that life sentence or that uh 80 years of prison uh the 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 electric chair whatever they were gonna go through i'll go ahead and take that on for them man now if you were that prisoner or if that was what you were allotted to go through and that person just was like, yeah, nah, don't even worry about it. I'm going to take on all that for them. What kind of appreciation should you show to that person, man? Okay. What type of appreciation should you show to that individual? What type of spirit? If that individual asks you to do anything, 
What type of spirit should you have? Of course I'm going to do it. You're asking me to do what? Just for, for you, you took on all that. Just even hearing the sentence of what you should, what you should have served in that example, you'd be like, oh, that it would sink your heart. All right. There's examples of you. You can look up clips of people when they hear their sentence of whatever they got to suffer, like somebody might have committed a murder or, and they get on trial. They hoping that they ain't got a, they hoping that they, uh, they don't uh, get a lesser sentence or that they aren't proven guilty. And then as soon as they hear that the, 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 uh, this person is guilty of all charges, their heart sinks, people be fainting, you know. <laughs> then imagine imagine that person gets up from fainting and then it's like hey you know what don't even trip somebody else is going to take care of that for him there should be a certain uh, amount of appreciation that you have for that man so when the lord is asking us to do of these little things for after all that he suffered man we should be elated to do it not only elated to do it all right but but have a contrite spirit man I have a spirit of not being able to do enough for the lord you know but anyways, let me get back to it. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse uh, six, uh, verse five, it says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. So through what the Lord suffered, all right, we're able to even get this knowledge, man, to where we could serve the Lord, to where our works can be accepted, man. You know, we messed up so bad. <laughs> we messed up so bad that even to this day, the Heavenly Father isn't dealing with us, man. To this day, Yahweh is in the heavens and he's not dealing with us. We messed up that bad <laughs> to where we had to go through an intercessor. The Heavenly Father is like, I'm not dealing with them. I'm not dealing with them. They've done too much, man. They fucked up too much, man. You fucked up too much. All right. I messed up too much. To where the Heavenly Father to this day <laughs> is not dealing with us, man. It's where we have to go through Yahweh Shai. Our prayers go up and they go through, they go to uh the angels take those prayers up and they're given to Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai has to pray to uh the Father for us, man. He's making prayers. The Heavenly Father is hearing Yahweh Shai. He's the mediator, man. Because we messed up that bad. We should feel contrite about that, man. It says, uh, all we like sheep have gone astray. Every last one of us. Nobody is exempt from this, man. I'm not exempt from this. I went astray. All right. You went astray. All right. Our forefathers, King David, he went astray. The prophets, they went astray. Jeremiah, Isaiah, all of us have been uh, uh, accounted under sin, man. The scripture says there's none among the righteous that have not done iniquity, man. So every last one of us from the from the those that are even having faith, all right, and, and, and trying to serve the Lord, all right, we all messed up, man. Even to the wicked of our people that don't even care that they messed up. It says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and Yahweh hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. So we should all be getting fucked up, man. And I'm you in Salakia. For the uh, the rudeness in, uh, in speech, but it is what it is, man. Because this is how it feel. This is just how it's coming out. Because this is how I feel, man. Okay, through the spirit, I messed up, man. <laughs> All right, I'm we are I'm in captivity right now under Esau Edom, having to clock in the damn work. All right, having to deal with the fucking. Uh, relationship problems and hell and being under the curses and all types of all i'm going through all this because of what i did man for the suffering that for the the, the fuck ups that i did all right and even on top of that for suffering for these things the lord still punishes us less than our iniquities deserve man the little hell that we go through is less than what we truly deserve what yahweh Shah went through that's what we deserve man okay to be humiliated to suffer like that man and once again, we're so filthy. If we couldn't even have gone through that and the Lord would have accepted it, man. If we went through what Yahweh Shai went through, we still wouldn't have been accepted. And the reason I'm saying that is because we, uh, 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 the sacrifice had to be an unblemished lamb. So even if we went through that, we, we uh, uh, were so damn filthy that it wouldn't have been accepted, man. See, the sacrifice that Yahweh Shai made, it was accept accepted because when he came as Yahweh Shai, he committed no sin. So when he went through all that, the Lord accepted it. 
If we would have went through that, it still wouldn't have been accepted, man, because of how filthy we are. All right. But it was accepted through Yahweh Shai. And then you got, man, Salaki, and you got niggas that say we ain't supposed to worship Yahweh Shai. That's saying we ain't supposed to bow down to him, man, and praise him. The scripture says, kiss the son lest he be, lest he be angry, meaning that we're supposed to worship and serve him, man. Lest he get, lest he be angry and pissed off, man. You can't, you can't uh, uh, have an attitude when that person that laid down your, their life uh, for you and when they are telling you to do certain things, you can't be, oh, I got to do this and I got to do that, man. What the, what the fuck kind of spirit is that, man? After all that he did for us, are we going to serve him with a, a nonchalant attitude and not with joyfulness and, and gladness of heart, man? We can't be in that. I'll be cutting myself with that, man. All right. Get mad at certain responsibilities that we had. And it's, it's the flesh, you know, but we have to overcome the flesh, man. Look what the Lord did for us. Even the little hell that we go through, man. So fucking what, man? It's less than what we actually deserve. All right. I'm going to grab this in the book of uh, Jonah or Ezra, man. Ezra, the ninth chapter. That's why it says, I will bear, Micah said it, man. I will bear the indignation of the Lord. Why? Because I sinned against him. So whatever little hell that the Lord has it for us that we have to go through, man, we should bear it with integrity because it's less than what we should really go through, man. Ezra chapter nine and verse uh, 13, it says, and after all that has come upon us for all, for our evil deeds. So after everything that we go through, all that's came upon us, the slavery, the captivity, but even in your individual lives, man. The financial troubles, the hell that you get with within your relationship, all right? The uh the 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 suffering, the bodily ailments, whatever the case may be, man. All that has come upon you for for your evil deeds and for your great trespass, seeing that thou our power has punished us less than our iniquities deserve. So even when we get punished, it's mercy, man. The Lord doesn't punish us to the extent of what we should really go through, man. It says, uh, it has given us such deliverance as this. So we, the hell that we catching is less than what we deserve, man. So knowing that, hey, the wadi al bashimi I was shy, man. And then on top of that, the hell that we catch is used to help us, to refine us, to make us better. The Lord ain't just kicking our ass because he's angry, all right? Because he's mad, even though he has not every right to be furious and upset with us. But he doesn't just kick our ass because he's angry at us. All right, he takes us through hell to refine us, to purify us, to make us better so that we learn lessons so that we can move and act and be in a way that's pleasing unto him because we have not walked in a way that's pleasing unto him, man. We messed up, all right? We didn't do what was pleasing in the sight of the Lord. Therefore, we're in this predicament. That's for, therefore, we're under these curses, man. It says back in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse... Uh, Verse six, it says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned, we have turned everyone to, to his own way. And Yahweh hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. So even, even in this faith, when we mess up, we should feel contrite. Right? Why? Because those mess ups, the Lord had to go through this, man. He had to be beaten. He had to bleed. All right. He had to uh, uh, go through this excruciating pain. He had to be spat on for the shit that you do, man, for the things that I do. All right. He had to carry that cross, okay, in the streets and be humiliated and be mocked at because of what what you did and the things that you will do in the future because we are going to still mess up. So when we do those things, how can we not be contrite? And that's the spirit that the Lord wants us to be in, man. We can't serve the Lord in this uh in in a, a spirit of not appreciating the sacrifice that he made, man. It's uh, I know it's times where I imagine like where I catch myself getting just I'll be playing, man, bitching up. All right. When I catch myself bitching up and complaining about little shit and this and that and the third. All right. I, it's, I, I imagine the Lord looking at me like, hold on. you Do you remember what I went through for you for the things that you did? And you all you all upset and uh, emotional and mad or whatever the case may be, man, whatever folly that I, I present. All right. Then I'd be like, man, Salaki, Yahweh Bashimi, I was shy. Salaki, Yahweh Bashimi, I was shy. Because the sacrifice for the, the sacrifice that you made, uh, I, I'm I'm unworthy. I'm unworthy. All right. I wish, I mean, 
and I, and I say this uh, with, with, of course, with the wisdom of the scriptures, but I wish that the Lord didn't have to go through that, man. I wish that he didn't have to, uh, to, 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 to go through that excruciating pain for what I did. I wish that I didn't mess up this bad to where the Lord had to suffer this, man. I wish that I didn't fuck up so bad that the Lord had to be humiliated like this, man. This is what he went through for us. All right. I wish that I didn't fuck up this bad. But I did, all right? And you did, man. We all did, okay? So what kind of spirit should we be serving the Lord in, man? And it was all, of course, set up through prophecy, all right, that we would go off and that the Lord would have to suffer these things and thawadi out and thawadi to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son because Yahweh, He loves Yahweh Shai, man. And He put Yahweh Shai through that, all right? Just like Abraham loved Isaac and he was willing to sacrifice that, Okay? Well, Yahweh did that, man. He sacrificed uh, uh, Yahweh Shai, whom he loved, man. His son, all right? He watched Yahweh Shai go through that for us. So that shows the love that the Heavenly Father ultimately has for us. And Yahweh Shai, his love for us as well to be obedient and to still go through that, man. Okay? I wish it didn't have to go down like this, all right? To where we would be so fucking... <laughs> it's such a mess, all right? And I wish we would have just been obedient. But it's all according to the will of the Heavenly Father, man. But now, knowing that, what do we have to do, man? We have to serve the Lord. We owe him our life. We owe him everything and more, man. All right? <laughs> it says, uh, all right, I'm going to get this in Psalms 51. All right, Psalms 51 and verse uh, 17, it says, uh, the sacrifices of the Most High are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. Oh, Yahweh, thou will not despise. So we should feel broken and contrite, man. All right. Broken and contrite for all these things, man. It says. Uh, verse seven, he was Isaiah 53 and seven. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his before her shears is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. And the Lord, man, he went through all that. He ain't even complained, man. He didn't even complain about it. He just suffered it. He went through it. Because, of course, ultimately, he knew that uh, he had to pay for his own sins. Right. First and foremost, as it says in the book of Hebrews. All right. It talks about how he paid for his transgressions and then the transgressions of us. Okay, but uh, he didn't open his mouth, man. He he just he dealt with it. All right, he dealt with it, man. We should deal with the hell that we got to go through as well, man, with integrity. All right, of course we cry out unto the Lord. We should. All right, pray unto the Lord. All right, cry out for these things, man. But ultimately, man, hey, what we suffering is because of what we did, and it's less than what we should go through. All right, what we really deserve to go through. But I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna end it off on this precept, Salakia for uh. Uh, not bringing out as many precepts, you know, but that's just, you know, how the spirit has it right now. Um, 50. Yes. All right. This is Luke chapter seven and verse, um, 36. It says, and, and one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet and behold, a woman in the city, it says, uh, and behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Yahweh Shai sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. All right. So Yahweh Shai came into, came into the house. Okay. Uh, the woman. Okay. She, uh. She got word that Yahweh Shai was going into the, uh, I believe it was Simon. I might, yeah, it was Simon's house. I believe it was, if I'm not mistaken, but Salaki, if I, yeah, it was Simon. All right, it says in the verse uh, 43. But anyways, uh, just picture this, okay? So Yahweh Shai, he's sitting down in the house. All right, and this woman, she hears that Yahweh Shai is coming. And then she's crying with her tears, man. Tears flowing down her eyes. All right. Why? Because of the sins that she committed and she wanted mercy. She knew she messed up. She knew she was a sinner that she did all this bullshit, man. Right? 
this should how this is the spirit that we should be in but i'm gonna read on salaki it says uh now when the uh verse uh 39 now when the pharisee which had bidden him saw it he spake within himself saying this man if he were a prophet would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him for she is a sinner so Solomon's like man if he doesn't he know that this, this chick is she's, she's wicked man you know she's probably jumping from rod to rod doing all types of wickedness you know and i'm just using different things you know as as examples you know but she was known she was a known sinner so she was known to be out there whatever whatever wickedness that she was doing man but she she was contrite and she believed and she was in the spirit of repentance but simon was looking at just the the filth that she had did right like man if he knew man <laughs> he'd be like get away from her all right yeah get away man all right you just a you just a a, a a fuck up right but we all are mess ups man okay we all have sinned greatly we all came short of the glory of the most high right but it says um verse 40 and yahweh shai answered and said unto him simon i have somewhat to say unto thee and he said master say on there was a certain creditor which had two debtors uh the one owed 500 pence and the other 50 and when they had nothing to pay and this is us we had nothing to pay we could not pay the price there was nothing that we could have offered to the heavenly father that we could have done okay so to speak right to uh, uh to cleanse us of our own iniquities man we were that much in debt and we have nothing to give right it says verse 42 and when they had nothing to pay he frankly forgave them both so he was like you know what charge it to the game i ain't even tripping about it okay right it says uh tell me therefore which of them will love him most simon answered and said i suppose that he to whom he he forgave most and he said it to him thou was rightly judged yeah you're right verse 44 and he turned to the woman and said unto simon seest thou this woman now picture this she's sitting now and still crying man washing the lord's feet with her hair all right and the scripture says how the glory of a woman is her hair so she humbled herself she gave up her glory everything just to wash the lord's feet and she was kissing his feet man now how many people would actually do how many just since it's talking about a woman how many women would do that man today sit there and and and, and kiss at your feet all right or do that she humbled herself she was in a contrite spirit and the lord didn't despise her because she was that broken for her sins man right so it says, seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. And that's how we should be. We should continually kiss the son, meaning continually serve him, right? Knowing what we've done and knowing the price that he paid for us, man. It says, my head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. So the Lord wiped all that clean, man. It says, for she loved much. So we are supposed to love much, man. It says, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. So if you think that you ain't really that bad, all right, you ain't really messed up that bad, you know, if you got that mentality, well, then you ain't going to show that love, the Lord that much love because you don't think you that filthy. Right. This is the reality of it, man. We have to check that spirit. There's times where you could you could look at yourself and oh man, I wasn't really that bad, you know, and this and that or whatever the case may be. That's not the spirit to be in, man. We have to really understand how filthy we are, because if we really grasp on how filthy we truly are. This is the spirit that we'll be in. If we think that we owe the Lord a lot, then we would love the Lord a lot. If we reflect on the sacrifice that was made and and and, and really uh, have that resonate in our spirit, then we will be in the spirit of this woman. And we should all be in the spirit of this woman, man. It says, um, and he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, thy faith has saved thee, go in peace. So knowing all this, how should we be serving the Lord, man? All right. And once again, this is, this is a cut to myself. 
because we get caught up with the everyday things and you know the trials and tribulations to where at times we can forget the sacrifice that the lord made man or the magnitude yeah we're doing the work we're doing lessons you know but sometimes we got to really just meditate on what the lord actually went through for us for what you did for what i did okay i'm um man i had a precept in mind damn i wish i wish it was back uh well, you know, that's it, man. Uh, you know, that's all I had through the spirit. Like I said, I was really just kind of uh, uh, meditating, meditating on this. And um, but check out this, check out this video, man. And 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 let us not forget what the Lord suffered through for us, that we could have this knowledge and that we could serve Him, and having that opportunity, uh, oppor the the chance. All right, to at least give an attempt to make it up, man. I'll grab this. This is Psalms 116 and 12. It says, what shall I render unto the Lord? Yahweh by Hashem Shai for all his benefits toward me. So how can we pay the Lord back? Right. How, how can ask yourself this, man? How can you pay the Lord back for that? And in reality, we can't. We can't. We even we doing all this work, it ain't enough. All right. It wouldn't have been enough. So now the Lord is like, you know what? Just do what I told you to do. My yoke ain't grievous. My burden is light. Serve me. Do these lessons. Be a brother. You know, the Lord isn't requiring a lot out of us, man. So when those demons try and get on, get on, our, get on us and have us to to not to get in the spirit to where we aren't showing appreciation for the sacrifice that the Lord uh, gave to us, we got to snap out of that. We got to remember the sacrifice that was made and snap out of that because the flesh will come. All right, the flesh will rise up and we can go on. That's the spirit. Forgotten days without number. The Wadi Abashim Yawashah. I was hoping that the Lord would bring it back to my spirit. All right, this is um, Jeremiah chapter two and verse um, 31. It says, O generation, see ye the word of Yahweh? Have I been a wilderness unto Israel? Right? Has the Lord just been doing us bogus? Has He not been taking? Had had He not taken care of us, looked out for us, and all these things? And what does it say? Just around wax fat and kick. We didn't appreciate it, man. All the things that the Lord did for us, man. We didn't appreciate it. We didn't show it. We didn't even serve the Lord with gladness and joyfulness of heart, man. We acted like it was a, oh, it's a burden to serve the Lord and do what the Lord has commanded us. That's how we acted, man. Oh, this is a burden. I got to do this. I got to do that, man. That's how we acted, man. So therefore, the Lord brought curses upon us because we didn't serve him with joyfulness and gladness of heart for all the benefits that he gave us, man. F for the things that he did for us. But it says, uh, a land of darkness, uh, wherefore my people, it uh, says, wherefore say my people, we are lords, we will come no more unto thee. It says, can a maid forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet, my people have forgotten me days without number. So we went day after day after day after day, not even thinking about the Lord, not even considering the sacrifice that he made, man. We shouldn't be in that spirit now, man. We should remember these things, man. We can't forget the Lord and what he did for us. All right. So in, ended on this. Uh, I'm going to end it on the Psalms 116 and 12 it says, what shall I render unto the Lord? Yahweh for all his benefits toward me. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. And pretty much to sum it up, that's how I'm going to serve him, man. OK. I'm going to pay my vows, man. And we made a vow with the Lord to serve him. All right. Ultimately, all Israel entered into uh, the covenant. All right. That we would all uh, serve the Lord and seek the Lord. Right. So we're going to pay our vows, man. We're going to serve the Lord and we're going to seek the Lord, man. OK. Well, all our heart, mind, body and soul, man. And if we aren't in that spirit, then we should pray into the Lord to be in that spirit and, and, and really to be in the spirit, to appreciate what the Lord has done for us, man. All right. It says that's it, man. Lord's what I was at a fine. I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, by Hashem, Rakakudash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. 
with that, I'm going to say Shalom.